Hey yo, it's Tail. I am back with a trick that we have recently discovered that has significantly changed the route for the any percent speedrun. And I would expect this trick will be used in a lot of runs moving forward. And so I thought I would do a video kind of explaining what is happening, how it works, and the current use of it. The term for the trick is we're calling it shadow boxing on the discord there are i believe i think it's similar to i believe it was node flinging um in D dos2 i could be wrong about that uh but i believe it's similar to that and it basically combines a few tricks in order to skip a large portion of the game to start uh, the most important thing is to understand basically what is happening with the trick and how it works. Um, what it is, is that there is a glitch that allows you to throw a box with an animation for opening it any distance you want to any location you want. Uh, for example, uh, I have these three lined up. These are the boxes that, can, that I am aware of that can be used, but it can be anything that has an animation for opening, such as that the little sliding open of that front panel, or the sliding open of the top of a barrel. So, once you've got a container that has the animation, the trick is to stand near it, drag it to a location that you normally couldn't throw to, so whether that be target too far, or something along those lines, but for now we'll do a target too far. That is out of range. You drag the box there and you let go of mouse, basically locking in this location. And now, when I want to throw it there, I need to open the box, and then during the animation of the front panel opening, click and drag the box to a valid location, and instead of throwing it to that valid location, it will throw it to the place I had saved before, like so. So it's very simple. Um, I can do it again for this. We'll do the box. We'll move up to here. Open. And I missed that. Uh, if you miss like that, as long as you didn't drag the box anywhere, as long as it was just you missed the drag during the animation, you don't need to reset up your location. Just open it again, drag to a valid location, and the box will go to where you want. The neat thing is, this will allow you to throw a object really any distance as long as you can mouse over a location. For example, this wooden barrel, I want to throw it to there. So I'm going to let go, open it and drag, oh, open it and drag to a valid location, and there it goes. So that is the basic functionality of the trick. Uh, now we're going to get into what makes it shadow boxing. Okay, so now we're back here, and Shadowheart has had a bit of an accident, and this will allow us to do the shadow boxing part of this glitch. So basically, what you require is the same thing, a box that can be flung using that previous glitch, and a dead companion. You can achieve this pretty easily, just beat your companion to death. Um, once they are dead, just pick up their corpse, so you have them as an item in your inventory. So basically, the goal here is we want to be able to throw a box to a location we want to deliver a dead shadow heart to that location. In order to do that, we need to throw a box that is on fire in order to allow it to break as soon as it lands. So the, the order of operations for this is some form of flammable surface. You can use fire that's already on the ground. In this case, I'm going to use a grease bottle um, to just drop a puddle of grease. And then I'm going to use firebolt to light it on fire. And then I'm going to drag my box into it. Note that the damage for fire is 1d4. And these boxes all have four health, so it can roll a four 
and break your box. And if that happens, you just have to find another box or restart your run. But that is unfortunately just a RNG element we have to deal with. So I'm just going to drop a quick save in case it does break. Light this on fire. And it's on fire. I'm now going to enter turn-based mode. The reason for this is because this box will now, on the next turn, burn for another two damage and become and be destroyed. At which point, I can't do the glitch anymore if I haven't already done it. So we enter turn-based mode to give us as much time as we need to perform this part of the glitch. Now, open up the box's inventory. Place your dead character inside. And now we're just going to do simply perform the glitch we've already learned. Throw it over, let's say, to here so we can see the effect. And then do the open and drag to get the box to fling. Now that's landed, exit turn based mode, it breaks, and we have deposited Shadow Heart at a distance that we could normally not throw her to. This will work again with any container. Uh, that can open. However, barrels have a unique property in that unlike crates, they are double damage from fire, meaning the only roll that will not kill a barrel from fire damage is a 1 on the 1d4, because it will be doubled, so a 2 would kill it, a 1 wouldn't. So, while yes, barrels can be used, they are much less consistent, and I don't recommend it unless you are trying for a perfect run with the least possible time and you're willing to put in hundreds of attempts to get the one time your barrel doesn't explode. So that is the entirety of what makes the shadow boxing glitch work. Now we're going to move on to a use case and specifically the use case that we are using in the current any percent run. All right. Now we're back in the beginning of the Shadow Curse lands in Act 2. And this is the location of the trick that we have been doing uh, that has been saving a ton of time. Basically, what is happening here is that when you enter the Shadow Curse lands, all of the locations in Act 2 are loaded up in the map. And it just so happens that directly east of this starting area is the final encounter with the brain where Gale blows himself up uh, and the run ends. That there is a cutscene trigger right after the door at the end of the run normally that when you go through the door you hit that cutscene trigger it starts the cutscene, you choose to blow yourself up, the run ends. It turns out throwing the corpse of a companion into that cutscene trigger will also trigger the cutscene, even though they are dead. So the idea here is that we are going to throw Shadowheart from this beginning all the way to that trigger, and that will allow us to skip everything other than that cutscene in this act. Uh, the setup for this is very precise um, and can take a lot of tries, but it, it is worth it once you've got it down. So to start, we need a fire source. Unfortunately, the brazier does not work and you can't destroy the brazier. So a simple way is to have grease, the grease spell. Just cast it slightly to the side of this brazier or a grease bottle works or any flammable surface. Um, and once we've got our fire surface, we enter turn-based mode. So cast this, enter turn-based mode. And now we just need to drag one of our boxes onto the fire. It didn't break, so we are lucky. So this is now set up. We're going to drop a quick save here, just to make sure that we can reload if necessary. We open the box, deposit Shadow Heart. Everything is set up the same way as if we were just flinging her before. But now, the difficult part is here. There are a lot of different ways to line this up. I'm going to show a few of them. Um, I can do them back to back to show what we are looking for. To start, grab your box, and we are going to move over. I'll zoom out so you can see we're moving around this rock here. 
and then back here and then move the camera into this rock so we can see into this void. Out here in the distance is the cutscene trigger we are looking for. As long as you do not let go of left click, you can take as much time as you need here. You can use middle mouse to rotate the camera and just keep left click held down. Um, as you see, we're still moving around the box looking for a location. So the first spot and probably one of the more difficult ones to pinpoint, however, it lets me show the void. So I'm going to do this one first is if you move your camera to right about here at 167 X and Y2, and then point your camera directly east so that the east is straight up and west is straight down by this button. Then find this little line that's jutting out of the, uh, out of the rock here and put your cursor just slightly below it and move your cursor along to the left until your not enough space changes to a chasm. There's the chasm. Once you've found this chasm, you'll notice there's actually a chasm. There should be a chasm above this line as well. Right about here. We don't want this one. We actually want the one below the line. Again, this one takes a lot longer to find. Once you've found the chasm, move your cursor slightly to the right so it's back to target is blocked and let go. And then do the fling. And once she disappears from your UI, you can exit turn-based mode and you should get a chat bubble. And then when you switch to Shadowheart here, you'll have entered the cutscene. And that is the skip. I will now show up an it. easier setup that Salute. personally I think yes. is much more easy to recreate. I just wanted to show the void one first so that you had a you could see where in the void we are aiming. Again, there are many, many ways to set this up, and you can look for one that works best for you. I'm only going to show the two that I personally find the easiest to understand, which is the one I just did. And then this new one, which has less variation on your camera. We are ready to do the fling in the second layout. We have our box here. It is on fire. We want to place Shadowheart inside. And then with our camera zoomed all the way out, and facing directly east. Directly east with west just straight on with that button. We're going to wrap around this rock. And then hold up W and D or up into the right. Until we are unable to go further into this rock. It should be around 168 and negative 3. Then move your cursor all the way to the top of your screen as far as it will go. And then just to the right of the in the gale face and the environment, uh, you should be able to find that ca same chasm here. So same rule, find the chasm. It's just slightly to the right of these pictures. Move your mouse just a little bit to the right of it so it's back to target is blocked. Let go. F1 takes you right back to your character. And then perform the, perform the flame. Again, if you mess up like that, it doesn't matter as long as you didn't drag the box. There it goes. She disappears. We exit turn-based mode. Hit F2 to go to Shadowheart. And we are in the cutscene. So that is the easier setup. And personally, I think it's the one that's going to catch on. I just wanted to show the other one first because I think it's important to understand where in the void you are aiming. Skip those cutscenes. And you've got credits. So that saves a huge amount of time, uh, I believe, if done as fast as possible. This trick can bring a two minute section of the run down to under 45 seconds. Uh, and there are other uses for this. Um, anywhere you trigger a cutscene by walking into an area, you can just throw a body in and this will work. All right. 
So that's it for this tutorial, and thank you again. A lot of people have made this really enjoyable. I haven't done these kind of tutorial videos before, but I am very excited by the fact that people are seeming to enjoy them. So I will, as more tricks are learned, I will continue to create these short tutorials, and I hope that helps somebody. All right, that's all I have. Bye-bye now.